Alright, uh, greetings to everyone and uh, welcome to today's uh, discussion on uh, meningitis. Moses Mwene, a six-year-old boy, is admitted to a pediatric ward with complaints of fever, restlessness, and irrelevant talk. On investigation, he is found to have pyogenic meningitis. Question A, define meningitis. So in my definition, I'm saying meningitis, basically this is just a central nervous system condition in which there is inflammation of the meninges covering the brain and uh, the spinal cord and it is characterized by fever, neck stiffness and also irrelevant talk. Yes, so that is uh, the definition of uh, meningitis. So whatever you're defining a condition, it is very important that you mention the, the system that that condition affects. We also need to mention the major things that occur in that particular definition, in that particular condition, and also we need to mention the characteristics or the signs and the symptoms that that, that patient is likely to present with. So that is uh, uh, what we need to talk about when we're defining a condition for us to get all the required uh, five uh, marks. Yes. Then question B, it is saying, describe the pathophysiology of pyogenic meningitis. So what happens in pyogenic meningitis is that uh, uh, when, a, when a person gets infected with uh, a bacteria such as uh, a streptococcal pneumonia, yes, so those uh, bacteria will invade the blood circulation. Once the blood circulation gets uh, infected with uh, these uh, bacteria, you find that uh, through the blood circulation, those uh, infections will reach the central nervous system while they will infect the, what, the cerebral spinal fluid. When the cerebral spinal fluid gets uh, uh, infected, you find that those uh, 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 infections will also embed the meninges and also the ventricles. Yes. So once they once they infect the ventric the, the, the meninges, you find that uh, the meninges will get what uh, will get inflamed, and uh, a patient will start uh, having uh, uh, the signs and symptoms of meningitis, such as neck stiffness, and also uh, signs of uh, bruziskis and uh, a sign as a result of what uh, meningeal irritation. Yes. Then uh, when uh, those infections in, uh, invest the the ventricles. Those ventricles again they will get inflamed, and uh, once they get inflamed, you find that uh, uh, there will be, uh, there will be blockage in the outflow of what uh, of uh, the cerebral spinal fluid. As a result, the patient also present with what uh, hydrocephalus. Yes, so that is uh, a brief pathophysiology of uh, pyogenic meningitis. Then question C. Question C. It is saying state uh, three classifications of meningitis. That was fifteen percent state three classifications of meningitis that was 15 percent so we have uh, the first classification which is uh, uh, bacterial meningitis of which bacterial meningitis it is also referred to as what biogenic meningitis yes so for bacterial meningitis basically this is just a form of meningitis that is caused by what bacterial infections such as uh, a streptococcal pneumonia and many other uh, bacteria Yes. Then the other classification of meningitis could also talk of uh, fungal meningitis. So in fungal meningitis, this one it is just uh, a form of meningitis that is caused by what? That is caused by uh, fungal infections such as uh, uh, a cryptococcal neoformans. Of which cryptococcal neoforman it is uh, the commonest uh, fungal uh, cause of what? Of uh, meningitis. Yes. Then uh, the third classification that we could also talk of, it is viral meningitis. For viral meningitis, this one is a form of meningitis that is caused by viral infections such as what, such as uh, mumps or what, measles uh, virus. Yes. In other words, uh, uh, the uh, meningitis basically it is classified in relation uh, to the cause of that particular what, meningitis. Yes, we need to know that. Then question D. Question D, it is saying state 5 specific signs and symptoms of meningitis. State 5 specific signs and symptoms of uh, a meningitis. So uh, on the specific signs and symptoms of meningitis, we could mention uh, a positive sign of a uh, Koenigsegg sign. We could also talk of uh, a positive sign of Brodzinski sign. We could also talk of uh, uh, neck stiffness. We could mention uh, signs and symptoms such as uh, fever. We could also mention uh, a convulsions and also photophobia is present in uh, this condition yes so all these con all these signs and symptoms they come in as a result of what meningeal irritations yes 
Then question uh, E. Question E, it is saying, describe the medical and the nursing management you would provide to Moses from admission up to a discharge. Yes. So on the medical management, remember when you're writing the medical management, first of all, we need to start with uh, the investigations. Yes. On investigations, uh, the first investigation that we we'll do, we we'll do history taking, which will show us a uh, uh, history of what, uh, neck stiffness and many other signs and symptoms. Yes. Then I uh, could also do a physical examination, which will show us uh, uh, a positive, which will show the positive sign of uh, kinexis and also a positive sign of what, rosiskis. Yes. Then uh, the other investigation that can also be done, we could also do a full blood count or a complete blood count, which will show an elevation in the number of uh, white blood cells. Yes. Then uh, the other investigation that can be done could also do a lumbar puncture. Yes, for lumbar puncture, this one is uh, more like uh, a confirmatory diagnosis for meningitis because it will show us the, uh, uh, the causative organisms of that particular uh, uh, meningitis. Yes. We can do that yes then uh, finally we could also do a blood slide which will uh, help us in ruling out what is cerebral uh, malaria remember cerebral malaria it has got uh, clinical presentations that are similar to that of what uh, of meningitis so we uh, will do uh, a blood slide to rule out the uh, cerebral uh, malaria yes then coming to the med to, to the treatment now on the treatment we can give uh, uh, antibiotics we can give uh, uh, anti uh, we can also give uh, analgesics we can also give uh, steroid medications yes basically the the, the treatment for uh, the treatment for meningitis it is in relation to it is in relation to the cause of that particular what, meningitis yes if uh, the cause it is due to bacteria we could give uh, a drug such as uh, uh, x pen yes can be given we could also give uh, uh, steroids such as uh, prednisolone or hydrocortisone in order to lessen the the to lessen the, the inflammatory process. Then finally, we could give uh, antipyretic medication and also analgesia such as uh, paracetamol in order to do it to lessen a uh, 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 fever and also pain respectively. Yes. So those are the medications that we give in uh, a patient with uh, 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 bacterial meningitis. But if uh, the cause it is a uh, cryptococcal neoforma, which is a fungal infection, we could give uh, a fluconazole. Yes. So those are the medications that we can give in uh, a patient with uh, a meningitis. Yes. Then on the nursing management, there's nothing here to talk about here. We just need to use that same uh, general management that we've been uh, uh, writing uh, throughout our, our practice. And we'll get, we'll get the required 50% on uh, this uh, question. Yes, so thank you for listening and uh, don't forget to follow the page and it's number RN Tutor. Yes, thank you very much for your time and uh, uh, attention.